Yeah, let's just take a look at that as like a, a temptation or a trick to, to guard away from that. Would you rather be right about the, the way that the ego set up the cosmos or be happy? Now, we have to take a closer look at, for a moment, how the ego set the cosmos up. That's why the Course in Miracles is such a great tool, because it says, oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly how. And the idea that, that we can have beings that seem to be outside of us, who <laughs> have different thoughts than us, different beliefs than us, and a different mind <laughs> than us, that's the way the ego set the world up. Mm -hmm. And so when we are tempted to believe, well, they want to be right, then we've already fallen into being, wanting to be right about the way the ego set the world up, as if these characters are really out there and they've got minds of their own and thoughts of their own, and even a will yeah. apart from us. Mm -hmm. So that's the trick. That's, that's where the humbleness starts to come in, like, okay, this is the way that it seems, and am I going to cling to being right about that perception, or am I willing to be happy? And that's where the practice comes in. Yeah, it's a much larger context. As long as we freeze it down into, like, people and opinions and I like what they said but I didn't like what they said or right and wrong even in terms of morality I think a lot of us you know have have struggled with this morality thing right behaviors wrong behaviors you know when someone says that's just not right <laughs> that's just not right and then it gets finer and finer and finer I remember one time we were in Australia and somebody was talking and and somebody said, you know, that's off. That's off. And I said, well, let's, let's just explore what off is. And, and who is the one that can say that's off? You know, that, that's how deep it goes. Because we have to be able to bring every scrap, every thought, every opinion that's part of that wanting to be right about the, the separation, right about separate minds, private minds, private thoughts, personalities, persons. All of that is part of a, a giant like cobweb system that, that has an arrogance about it, that really denies our divinity. And it seems easy to lose track of the big picture and to get caught into the little blinders the microcosm and that's where we have to go much deeper into consciousness much deeper into mind to actually have that experience that we're that we're desiring that freedom yeah and I think to simplify it when we look at that whole category of trying to be right about anything in the world it all comes back to linear time I I remember going through the Course and I, I'm going through all these chapters and it's getting later and later in the text. And then I remember looking at the name of the subsection in the chapter and it said, the immediacy of salvation. And I was like, whoa, the immediacy. It wasn't talking workbook lessons in there, it wasn't talking practice even, it was a room the immediacy of salvation, and he says, Be not content with future happiness, for it is not your just reward, for you have cause for freedom now. And I was just, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Be not content with future happiness. That's like another temptation. It used to sound pretty good to us. Hope for the future, a better life in the future. You know, it used to be something that we were hanging on to, Okay, it's going to get better. I'll be happy when mm, I can't wait till this situation or circumstance. And then we're starting to realize that it's our perception, our cracked ego perception that is the problem. And as Einstein said, you cannot solve the problem at the level of the problem. 
we are not going to be able to solve perceptual problem with specifics. There's no amount of getting it right personally, doing the right thing enough as a person, even if you do it for days or weeks or months or years or decades, it's still not going to ever reach that because we need a mind solution for the problem because the problem's not in the form and in the specifics. It's like a giant distractive device. Remember those kaleidoscopes I used to play with kids where you could look through them and, and turn them and whoo, the colors and the patterns were just dazzling. And that's what this world is. It's a dazzling kaleidoscope tempting us to find the right scenario, the right event, the right circumstance. And no matter how many times we twist, and we just can't find it. So this is really, to me, an invitation. You know, I could see where I, I would have to be, accept that I was wrong about everything that I perceived in form, about every opinion, about every judgment. I couldn't cling and say, well, that, that served me and that helped me. I, Oh, empty, empty about absolutely everything.